Mr. Chairman of Ceremonies, um, they said the wise people is coming from the east, but the west people must make the plans work. So I think that's why I'm here today. Um, it's very difficult in our area to with the soyas, but it is a challenge. But we, I think, we succeed in that. This is the um, as of ceremony mentioned. I just returned from uh, from Botswana, and the previous. Prof. Um, Stephen, Stephen, he said he have jet lag from America, but I have bad lag from Botswana because it was an 18-hour drive straight from here and another three hours also to here this morning. So, uh, yes. Um, I'm farming in the Filinskuren area. Um, it is near uh, Nampu. I think you, all of you know where Nampu is. I'm just going to talk a little bit about at my practices, what we follow for soyas and, and my, my farming, just a little bit of background, and then we will go to the weeds and the problems we have. I started farming in 2000, a precision farming implemented in 2003, conservation agriculture in 2006, and start planting soyas on big scale um, for us, actually, in 2010 and also start implementing some contours in 2012. The question why, I think the previous speakers will answer a lot of your questions and if you go through my presentation, you will also get some answers. It's why soya, especially in the West and in your area also. Why is it the second largest commodity? Um, Mr. Gerard already mentioned it about what's going on in South Africa. The advantage and disadvantages, we will go through a few of that also. Um, disadvantages in our area, you must ha have enough combined space and whatsoever if it's ready to harvest. Um, and it's sustainable. If it's, is it sustainable on the, on the long term? Um, okay. Um, I follow a fully crop rotation in my area, 50% maize, 20% sunflower, and I, I think that's why where sunflowers is doing me a favor with, with another herbicide as clear fields is coming in, yellow light, if you know that product, and then we have 20%, 25% uh, soyas. The next year we change it around, and the year after that, um, that wasn't this year's crop, it was last year. <laughs> this year's pictures was a bit bad, um, and then we crossed in it again. Um, the advantage of soil rotation, you all know why it's important for us, especially in the West, is nitrogen binding, uh, break plant disease, cycle of monoculture, a very important point for us. Um, in our soil life structure and ecology, um, help with weed resistance, that's an that's a important one. Help with weed resistance with rotation of herbicides. And late summer rain help us with soil moisture for the next year. My, it's my especially um, financial um, statements was the last four years, and we look at netto, net profit per hectare, not, not yield per hectare. <laughs> you won't believe it, but soy was first in my area. Um, it's doing very well. Um, sunflower second, and then maize. But the thing is, it's not including the advantage you have with the, with the um, nitrogen binding. So where do, you, where do you take that? Do you take it back to to the soyas, uh, or do you leave it at the maize for the high yield? Fertilized program, that is just a quick thing what I want to mention. Uh, we, have, uh, we do 100 kilogram of superphosphate, 10.5, and I'm going to tell you why. We, we change it every year, actually. That, this was the last year we used this, um, and 300 kilograms of 234 liquid with planting. Why, uh, the superphosphate, we do it wide spreading, pre-planting. There's a map of some of my lands, uh, fields, and you can see the phosphate was about, it's no small, but the average was about 40. And after last year, about 2.83 tons a hectare in my area for this, on this specific lands, fields was, uh, and we take the precision farming again, that happened to our phosphate. So that's why we apply phosphate in advance to help us with that um, attraction out of the soil. Uh, inoculation, just fast, um, that is a very important key in our area. You, you can leave fertilizer, but not this. Make sure about that. Um, the products we use in our areas is, is mostly that free. 
um, and we do sometimes single, uh, single or double inoculation. I did it this year was with Beckett Underwood liquid. I do it with uh, precision farming, I have uh, pumps on the on the cedars with um, a freeway regulator, and it's controlled by a flow valve. And we apply 50 liters of water per hectare, and we do it in the furrow. Uh, for your spray application, uh, that's a, one of the products we use. I think this Omnia products, and and we also use sometimes these products. Fungicide spray application, uh, there's a big debate in our area about it. We use all of those. There's another we can also use. Some of the farmers mentioned they have this green peeler with harvest time, but I think it's not because of this. Um, you get two types of soils, determined and, and non-determined. And I think in our area, if you get some late rain, the non-determined is growing again, and you have all these green wheels, is giving you a problem. But I think with the heat in the heat area, we have advantage with these products. Uh, insecticide combined with fung uh, fungicide spray. Uh, you know all this. We have the bollworm and uh, what is a Sondag Rocky? I don't know what's the name for a Sondag Rocky. <laughs> Sounds lovely, but it, it's a bloody bad worm. Uh, <laughs> And then uh, the contact killer is lanite, which we also use. Um, I divide it into the wheat into different groups, winter group and summer group. All the clever people here before me, um, they have all the names and stuff, but I'm just a practical farmer. Um, in the winter, we have flea banes, crawlons, what you mentioned earlier, ragwort, radiator bossy, uh, wet blom, blow dissel, Spiny Emax, Carpsa, Dibbleke, Cape Marigold, Goosblom. But the flea bane is a problem in our area, especially if you, you do it, come too late with it. Um, in the earlier stage, it looked like that. In the late stage, when it's too late, coming like that. So you want to get to it before that stage. That one is coming up, up now right there with the red. So how do we control it, or I control the flea vein? Um, the time is in April, May, June, July, maybe August. It is a bit difficult if you have still maize on the land, but with the high boys, you, if you can, came in, then it's okay. Um, at this moment, my spray is, is running now, if the wind is allowing us and the weather. We use 100 to 200 liters of water. Um, at this stage, I use 100 liters of water. We look at the conditions. I don't think farmers notice how much it costs you to transport a lot of water to your, to your farms. I think you must make that some also. But the most important thing is to apply the right doses of water, amount of water. Make sure about that, especially on, 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 on the other side. So what, 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 what do they need? How much do they need? Pay attention on that. Uh, I put up here Roundup. I use at this stage Roundup 540, 1.5 liter to 2 liters at this stage. And I also, 2,4-D Easter is also mixed into that, 250 moles. That is for us to control that flea bane. But if you do this now, you also control all this radiator, radiator bossy and all this all the winter wheat I mentioned earlier. And that's very important to do it now in our, in our area because we have the water tables, soil, to, to, to um, keep that water moist in your soil. The summer wheat, the grass, grasses they're talking about, wandering wood, uh, wandering dew, um, crotillaria, valleluceran. That wilder lucerne is, is a problem in our, our area. The silos don't, silos don't want to take it if it's in your soil. So you must. So it's a big problem for us. And uh, geel eindjes, yellow nut grass, cockleberry, conquer I wonder if is there some of that in America. I want to send them a pack so they can see how it works. <laughs> that is a very big <laughs> problem. And then the uh, willy from uh, uh, apple. Um, 
And then also the common pigweed. That is in the west. I, don't, I, I hear a lot of other uh, wheat problems in your area, but that is our ones in the west. The one that's for me a problem is the grass, especially the common couch grass, the quick grass. It's a black squirrel. <laughs> you, you, you struggle to control it in the early stage. Um, sometimes we apply six liters of Roundup a hectare. What I did this year, um, you will see the patches in the, in, in the, in, in the field. Of, and that's all, this, the second picture. And that is already sprayed with Roundup. Uh, it was in March, April, after, yeah, April, after soyas. And it worked very well. And how we did it is, how we managed it is, there's two types of management. Mechanical, and that's deep plowing. And you go back in the future. But we, we don't want to go back in the future. You want to go forward. But if you must, then you must do it. I'm sure about that. I wonder if there's still Walton Plus around here. Um, chemical management, and that's where we are of what I'm doing at this stage. You must go for the late summer. And I believe that is when your leaf is translocated back to your roots, I, something like that. I understand it. That's the best chance you have actually to control it. And we use 6% Roundup. So if you spray 100 liters of water and then it's six liters. This was just a prototype we built quickly this year in February. I took an old scuffle frame and I put five chairs on that. It looks like a motorbike thing, but anyway, it works. The person, one of the person is sitting there and you have two chains for it as guides. And that chain is 1.5 meters um, from each another. So that is his way to look at. If you see one of these grass patches, you open a tap, a, a 90 degree tap, and you spray it. Um, the tap is sitting there on the handle, and we have two um, dual sprays. We, there's some YouTube video with technology they use in, in America with an inflow rate, but I think that's very expensive. If you, if you go, <laughs> if you must spray the whole land with, with six liter of Roundup, it's very expensive. You can make that sum. I think we use, one of the fields was, uh, lands was 15% uh, of the area Roundup we used to control. Uh, Post-planting other sites, we used uh, two programs. The one is uh, with strong arm, 15 grams of Per hectare, Roundup, and Metolachlor. What is nice of this program is you don't have to follow up with Roundup at the later stage. Sometimes, yes, but most of the time not. Sorry, I, I mentioned the, the herbicide's name, but I don't know the active on, on that. Um, sometimes we use also Classic, but the disadvantage of that, you must come back maybe two times, three times after you spray. Um, to follow up with, with only with Roundup. What is important if we go back, especially in the West, if you must look at your previous crops before you plant soils there, and they look at, you, you will get some damage, your previous herbicides, and, and the main one for us is a triazinus, and make sure that it, there wasn't more than one kilogram active per hectare applied the previous year for your soils for follow up. The conditions of, for spraying, that is very important. You, I, don't, I, I don't think I have to go through this. Temperature is playing a role. When you, when you spray the wind, we don't want to go with higher than 15 kilometers per hour. Humidity um, plays a role. And enough water. Make sure you apply enough water. The most important is the water, the medium. The previous speaker was mentioned it a lot. Um, the first one is water quality. That is, that is so important. I think, I think if you look at the water quality, um, we will have less problems with resistance in the future because you have half effect of your herbicide is working if your water quality isn't good enough. 
previous speaker was also mentioned about the test of the water pH and the salts. And it's different from season to season, from dry season to wet season. I mentioned mine three weeks ago. The pH was, I think, 8.6. Um, and if it starts draining, it sometimes drops to 8 or 7.9. So measure it to make sure what is your pH in your water and your salts. Okay, that is a standard ammonium sulfate to apply, 1.5% for salt binding. Um, the water buffer I use at this stage, blood buff, this year. Um, and it, it has a wetting agent in it, spreading agent, penetrating agent, acidifier. And what is nice is the speed, pH indicator with the colors, green, yellow, and red. If they start throwing this blood buff in the water, it's red, it tells them you need more until it is yellow. If, if it's, the water is green, then it's too much. So I like this system, it helps me a lot. I think what we must add to this is the, time, the timing to spray. That's a very important thing. If you come too late into your lands, then you will have a problem. If you caught a wheat at the late, later stage, then you have a problem. The, the timing is very important. Equipment, nozzle spray tips. I have a farmer in my area who said, Roundup was isn't working. That is nonsense. He's going back to conventional. And I go and look at his sprayer, and he has, I think, five different types of nozzles on that. And I went back to my home and I fetched 60 of the old ones I just removed from my sprayer. And I took some of that to him and put it in his sprayer. And he couldn't understand, of, it was surprisingly the difference. So I think if you start as farmers, look at your nozzles. Also, you need different type of nozzles for different type of herbicides. Make sure about that and conditions. Fault test is also very important. Um, you, you can't go, you can't have too much fault test on your system. Um, especially on your lines be, uh, from the pump to your sections control at the end. Your pump must have the capacity. Not only the capacity, if you, if you drive with a high boy 18 to 20 kilometers per hour, you, uh, you still need that pump. To, we, we call it spark, uh, main. Make sure it, it main makes the tank very good. That pump has the capacity to do that. We have this year, um, when we spray, um, opslag mice in the, in the soyas um, and we use Roundup and uh, Pantera or Dan, what gebruik ek? Help me go. Pantera. Nee, 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 het Pantera gebruik. Well, of course, maar een van hulle, nee. And there was a windy day and we stand for a few hours and that, that mix, that Pantera drops to the bottom. And you could see later on when the tank was half, it doesn't work anymore. And it cost me a lot of money to go back and spray that again. So make sure your tank is constant mixing. That is a technical thing, but it must mix, and it, it must, must mix, and mix good. Precision, um, that is very important for us, especially at night when we work at night with the sprayers. Um, save you time, save you money. For not to overspray, um, if you overspray by 10%, you will lose money and the chemical guys will smile. And there's a lot of them who will smile. If you spray to less, you will also have a loss in yield because then you have wheat competition. Capacity. Make, make sure you have enough capacity f of, for all your farms. If you don't have, then you must hire in. If the wheat is small, you must, you must get in. Don't wait. I think that's a big problem, and that is one of the most important things in my farming business now is a sprayer. So it must be the best one, the newest one, with the best technology, 
and you must, must have enough capacity. Accurate or calibration. I have this year, it, even if it was a three year old sprayer, a new, actually a new one, we thought the calibration will be fine and we were surprised after we checked it, it was 15% out. If you, if you take 3,000 liters and you spray 100 liters, you must spray 30 hectares. And after the day I check, go back to the computer and see what was going on, and I see the L, they used too much herbicide. Then we realized that, 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 that sprayer, a flow meter was wrong. So make sure about your accuracy, accurate and calibration. And you can do it on a weekly basis. Also with the nozzles. The chemical guys have equipment to test your nozzles and see if it's spraying evenly and spraying correctly. It takes time, but it, it helps. And I mentioned about the mix constant in the main tank. Make sure your tank is const constantly mixed while you spray. Remember the six Ps. Poor proper planning leads to pathetic poor performance. So if you start wrong, you end wrong. So if you must make a plan, you do it. If you must bow, bolt and home bolt, home bolt sprayer to go and tackle that quick, then you must do it. Don't wait. Because that's where you lose money. And if you spend money, you're going to spend it on the, on the best website you can buy and the best sprayer equipment what you can buy. Your planter can be old, your seeder can be old, your combine can be old. But look at your, your spray equipment. That's the most important stuff. <laughs>